Good morning, boys and girls, and welcome to your Wednesday reading lesson. So today we are going to be looking at our pair selection, which are Caterpillar Spin Webs 2. It's on page 314. And so we wanted to talk about how um, this story, Caterpillar's Spin Webs 2, is an example of expository nonfiction. And remember that nonfiction explains a topic and gives facts and details about it. And there are some text features that you might see as you're reading this nonfiction piece, which makes it different from poetry or fiction. So when you're reading nonfiction, you might see graphic aids, photographs, illustrations, or diagrams. And you also will see captions that go along with the graphic aids or the photographs or the illustrations. You'll also see headings, and if you're on page 314, you'll see some different headings right there as you go through. So you can see um, caterpillars, cocoons, and you'll also see um, actual real photographs in the book on page 314. And we'll talk about that as we start reading. So hopefully you know a little bit about caterpillars. Um, hopefully you know that they don't build chrysalis, they have, they build cocoons. They are different than caterpillars. And so let's move on to our story. Okay, so hopefully you are on page 314 and you can see here, those are the actual pictures that I was talking about in the caption. Um, this is going to be filled with nonfiction, which is real and true facts that you can prove. Caterpillars Spin Webs 2 by Shane F. McKee. Spiders aren't the only living things that make and use silk webs. Caterpillars Spin Webs 2. Caterpillars. Sometimes a number of caterpillars will live together in a web of silk that they all weave together. When they make their web left, the caterpillars weave irritating hairs from their bodies into it. This helps to protect the caterpillars from predators. Case moth caterpillars build cases made of silk and sticks to live in. They carry the case with them wherever they go. Right. When something attacks them, they hide inside. Case moth caterpillar. So those are some really interesting looking caterpillars here. And then the cases over wow so cool all right so we're going to go on to the next page and we're going to look at cocoons cocoons some caterpillars build a cocoon before they become a pupa the cocoon protects the pupa while it is turning into an adult cocoons can be different shapes and sizes but are always made of silk Sometimes caterpillars will build leaves and hairs into their cocoons for extra protection. When this white-stemmed gum moth caterpillar made its cocoon, right, it wove hairs from its body into the silk. These hairs hurt to touch. This helps protect the pupa inside the cocoon. Millions of monarchs. A monarch caterpillar doesn't build a cocoon to protect itself. It forms a chrysalis instead. Before the caterpillar can form a chrysalis, it needs to use silk. The caterpillar spins a silk button to fasten its chrysalis to a twig. After two weeks, a beautiful butterfly comes out of the chrysalis. Monarchs can be found during the spring and summer in most areas of the United States. They live in warmer states, such as California, Texas, and Florida year-round. Monarchs. Okay, so we're going to think about what we just learned, and we're going to be comparing text. So we know that when we compare and contrast, we find similarities and differences. And we've done that a lot with Venn diagrams. So if we were comparing and contrasting Charlotte's Web to um, Caterpillar Spin Webs 2, 
So it says, think about the reason that caterpillars spin webs and the reason that spiders spin webs. And so we were just reading about both of those um, topics. And so when we think about that, how are they alike and then how are they different? So we know that spiders spin webs to catch insects to, to eat and then caterpillars spin webs to protect themselves. So if you go to number two, it says, um, how would you, or would you like to have a friend like Charlotte and explain why? So then we're going back to Charlotte's web and not the nonfiction piece that we just read. And so this would be your text to self. Question number was, was text to text. And we were comparing. Now we're actually taking the text and making it, um, taking that text and applying it to yourself. And so it, so you could have a possible answer that, yeah, you actually would want a friend like Charlotte because she was smart, she was interesting, she was helpful and kind to her friends. She was always putting others before herself. And then the last one, could the events in Charlotte's web happen in real life? And we know that no, it could not happen in real life because it was a fantasy. There were talking animals and a lot of other things that were happening in Charlotte's Web that could not happen in real life. So we know that that was a fantasy and not nonfiction. Whereas like we were just reading on caterpill caterpillar spin webs too, that was a nonfiction piece and it was filled with text features that prove that it would actually be able to look up these facts and to prove that that actually is true information and so that it's nonfiction. And it follows that it has captions and it has um, photographs and it has um, a lot of different text features such as diagrams, graphic aids, it has headings. Okay, so when you look all through this, you see that it is a nonfiction piece versus Charlotte's Web, which was a fantasy. All right, the next thing that we're going to do is, before we go on, we're going to talk about multiple meaning words today. So a multiple meaning word are words that have more than one meaning. For instance, the word calf, that could mean a baby cow, okay, or it could be the lower part of your leg. So those are multiple meaning words. And to be able to figure out the meaning of a word and the way it's being used in a sentence, you look at all the clues in the sentence. Okay, So they, the sentence gives you clues whenever you're reading it to figure out, OK, what kind of calf are we talking about? So let's say I'm talking about a bat. Well, right off the bat, you don't know what kind of bat I'm talking about. So if I put it into a sentence, the clues will lead you to understand what kind of meaning goes with the word bat. So my sentence is, he brings his bat to baseball practice. So then you know that it's a wooden bat or a metal bat that you swing and you hit a ball, you play a game with. If I use it in another sentence, the bat catches an insect, then you would know that we're talking about a bat that flies. Okay. Um, they're spelled the same, they're said the exact same way, but they have different meanings. So that's a multiple meaning word. So here's another one. So here's pen and ball, okay? So pen and ball has more, mean, more than one meaning. So you have to listen to how it's being used in a sentence before you can decide what it means. So the first one is, what kind of tool do you use to write? So then you would know you're talking about a pen that you write with, okay? Not this kind of pen. Where do pigs live on a farm? That would be a pen also, but that would be an enclosed space that has a fence that would keep an animal in. Then for ball, what round object is kicked in a soccer game? So that would be a ball that's in circle a circular shape, the 3D object, or where did Cinderella lose her slipper? She lost it at the ball, which would be like a dance. OK, 
Okay, so there are words that sound the same, spelled the same, but they have different meanings. So that would be a multiple meaning word. All right, so you will also be having a the one and only Ivan and a couple of quiz questions that will go along with the second part of your reading. And I hope you have a wonderful day. Take care.